Hi, I am Hinek Martinez and I would like to welcome you to a virtual tour of my studio in Brixton, London. Paint trolley, extremely important for every artist to have the space where you put colors, brushes, uh, palette, whatever. I like to have a lot of brushes and I always buy constantly a new brushes when I go to the shop because I think it's nice to have like new ones arrivals to your family uh, that I call the brushes. It's like a big family to me because I know when I touch each brushes, I know what exactly I can get from. So I use the colors for my oil oil paintings, uh, Old Holland or Michael Harding. So I don't use any other brand, but these two are to me the best ones because uh, the quality and the pigments and it just feels perfect. When I work on my big scale paintings, I would start with a charcoal and then move to underpaint with Sometimes I use the, the quash or acrylic water-based colors and, and then the final, the third layer is always done in oil. I don't do much glazing, um, which I would like to do more, but I just, uh, I'm always worried about um, the future of my work. So that's why I try to keep my paintings uh, technically very simple because I want to avoid uh, the future cracking and... Um, Sometimes I varnish my paintings, which I think is still quite important part of uh, finishing the work because it is something like the glass or it's protecting the painting. But it is quite a difficult question. I'm sure that many painters know what I mean. It's difficult to find the right varnish for, for the painting. So all these kind of like um, mediums, colors, brushes, I would always put on this paint trolley and every day kind of to reorganize a little bit but but i know exactly where things are i call this don quixote and um, uh, because there is a man in the wild sort of garden or forest uh, where there is a waterfall which i think is the contrast to the skull that he is holding on his left hand, um, which also could remind uh, lots of old masters painting, uh, especially Ribera, that he was painting a lot of old men holding the skull, um, like Saint Jeremy and Eronim or something like that. Um, so I wanted to kind of um, express here the difficult dialogue between the death and being alive. So the man, he is blind, so he's not looking at actually at the skull straight away. It looks like, but, but he's not. When you see the, the, the portrait closely, you see that he's completely blind. And I quite like this sort of um, idea behind the painting to um, looking like to something, but not straight away, because you don't get answer since you are dead. I mean, we still don't know what it means to be dead. And I think that painting is about um, being alive and being dead. He's shouting, he's not shouting, he's screaming, I don't know. So there is a lot of, I think, meaning behind, because you can also see the background as the Eden, you know, like the garden. Yeah, so I think I quite like the painting, yeah. On the blue table, you can see two of my latest drawings that I have been working on. And um, the drawing is extremely important for me because I draw every day. Even if I travel abroad, if I'm in the, at the airport, I always have to draw some lines just to keep myself alive. Um, I don't show much my drawings, but still keep going them. And here you can see that there is a man, like the head is finished, but then during the day I might maybe just work on the hands or for something. So I always come back to drawings. Sometimes I finish it at, at the one go, but sometimes I keep going and working on one piece maybe a month. 
But it doesn't matter that it's not in terms of time, but it's kind of like just a dialogue. Um, and also I um, have done some drawings on the ceilings, as you can see, and that's the charcoal drawings. And I was just trying to see how it is to work on the ceilings. Just imagine like how Michelangelo would work on the 16th chapel. And, and I have to say that it's extremely difficult to kind of like push yourself, your body on the other side of the floor and, and just to do some good drawings. So I have a big respect to all fresco and this kind of stuff, what is on, on the ceilings. But yeah, I think the drawings is extremely important and, um, and um, yeah, it really helps me um, to think and change my mind and it's a constant dialogue. The book called Young America, the daguerreotypes that has been done in America in 19th century. Um, I came across this book, I think like six, seven years ago um, in London, in the bookstore. And I immediately knew that this is an amazing book because there are so many interesting portraits inside, uh, portrait of people that already uh, died, that we don't know, we can guess if their families are still alive or not. Um, and I, as you could understand from my work, I'm very interested in kind of questioning the death, the life, what it means uh, being here and those kind of questions as everyone has. And I think this book is helping me to go through these answers because uh, it's not related to painting. So I feel that it's away from my kind of everyday practice. And it's a good sort of like a mirror of my ideas. So sometimes to times I would just open any page, look at those people, how they look like. And um, they all seem very magical because the techniques like daguerreotypes is so far away from digital time that we are living in now. And um, and I like it. I, I think it's um, it's very inspirational. I don't know how to explain it, but it just feels good to look at it. I would like to talk a bit about my language, my visual language that I created since 2010. Before that, I was just like training, painting, whatever I have seen. But I knew that I have to find out my own story in the painting, my own language. And I became interested in shaving form because that's the material that I touch every day. I shave sort of every day. And I think it's a kind of like innocent material. It's something like flowers. It's something what reminds me um, as a vanitas. And uh, so I thought, yeah, that, that's quite interesting. Why not to put it on the canvas? And I, I think during the 10 years I developed some line that goes through many paintings like Brexit, Saint Rosalia recently, or many others painting, and also like a lot of still life I have done with this shaving form. So for me, it's a new way of looking at the vanitas, at those old masters sort of ideas where they were painting flowers, like, you know, you can imagine sort of nice, bold, fresh flowers in in the jar or somewhere on the table and um, the shaving form form for me is kind of like similar because when you spray it um, and then paint it it's bold it's solid it's full of life it's fresh uh, but suddenly it dies so we know that it can vanish it can disappear it's the same way as the flowers so um, so I think this is this is what I keep sort of going with these um, ideas. But I, I didn't want to copy, you know, only the flowers and paint the flowers, but just to have a new material. And I think shaving form is a good reference to 21st century. This is a painting Saint Rosalia, and I started working on this large scale painting uh, in March 2020s when the lockdown started in London. And the main inspiration was the painting by uh, Van Dyck called the same title, Saint Rosalia. When he was in Palermo, uh, there was a big plague 
and I think around 10,000 people died there. Uh, so it just reminds me that this uh, COVID is kind of like similar as it was in three, four hundred years ago. And I thought that it would be interesting in 21st century to bring that old story and to recreate it and do oil painting and just to have that reference. And just to remind us that the, the Saint Rosalia is the uh, the patron of the plagues. So I think it's a quite symbolic um, that we all need it in 21st century, as they need it in 16th century. My grandfather from Zlichko, number two, um, is actually the second version, the same size of my grandfather's portrait. And I remember when I took a pictures of him long time ago, maybe 10 years ago. And um, he, to be honest, he wasn't very interested in art. And I think he didn't understand why I'm doing what I'm doing. Uh, but it was a good challenge to me to kind of explain him why the art is extremely important. I think every artist goes through this sort of question like um, that would have people around and always say like, oh, why you do that? And these kind of heavy or silly questions. So he was the only person in my family who would kind of question myself a lot about this, why are you doing art? But I know that he never get it <laughs> because he passed away a few years ago. And um, so I hope that he can see it now that there is a little, little point in it. So this is my unit storage and as you could see my studio is quite empty. I only keep paintings on the walls that I'm working on and once I finish them I put them in this unit. It is extremely important because the paintings are saved, they can dry here, nobody can come here so it's kind of like dark room and um, yeah it's a good safe protective place for all my work. Thanks for viewing the tour of my Los in Time studio. I hope you have enjoyed the experience. And if would you like to see more, please visit my website hinekmartinet.com.